Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about finding azimuth, altitude, and maximum altitude. Uh, we're going to get started with talking about what azimuth and altitude are. Uh, so azimuth, um, azimuth, or as, as we're going to tend to write it this entire time, is the direction that your star is in on the celestial sphere. Okay. What we are going to be using is this little half sphere that you see up here, which basically looks like this. Okay. Um, so this little half sphere, which we have right over here, um, this is going to be the celestial sphere, basically when we look up, when at the point directly above our head, which is known as the zenith. Okay. Um, and so we have the different parts, which are the horizon, which is the part that you will never be able to see over or around. Okay. It is permanently the edge on the field of your vision. Um, and depending on where you are, depends on how blocked it is. So if you live in an area where there are mountains around you, most of the horizon is going to be blocked by these mountains. Versus if you live by the ocean, you get to see that nice curve, which is the horizon completely unblocked. So as stars start to rise from the horizon, you get to see them. Okay. So basically what we are learning about first is azimuth. And azimuth is direction that your star is in on the sphere. So it is either south, east, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, okay? Uh, so basically, stars rise in the, in the east, set in the west, and hit their maximum altitude when they hit the celestial meridian. Okay? Uh, and so we use this because we're going to be using uh, the celestial sphere number. So the celestial sphere, azimuth directions, are from 0 to 360. So basically north is 0 and 360, east is 90 degrees, south is 180, west is 270, and then we have our ever, our, our, our interline like northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. We are not breaking them up beyond that for this because we do not need to. It is not as important that we have like exact like north by northwest or west by northwest of um, numbers. So we're just using 0, 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, and 315 as our numbers for this uh, analogy. Okay, so that is azimuth. Azimuth has to do with direction. Uh, and so you will never write north. You will always write 0 degrees or east, 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is altitude, which we will be shortening to alt. And altitude is going to be from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And how this works is 0 degrees is essentially when your star is on the horizon. Um, and 90 degrees is when it's directly over your head at the zenith. Okay? Um, which, depending on which side your star is on, it's going to be from the horizon of either south or north to the zenith. Anywhere in here is our 90 degree marker on either side. Okay? It stops at the zenith. So you cannot have 80, 95 degrees. That doesn't work. Okay. And when we start talking about maximum altitude, we'll start how to, we'll talk, talk about how to handle that. Uh, but for now it's always going to be zero to 90. So if your star is over here, it's going to be from zero to 90. If your star is over here, it's going to be from zero to 90 on either side. Okay. All right. So let's do a couple examples of how this works. Um, we're going to actually start with star B. Okay, so let's find its altitude and azimuth, right? So its altitude, since it's on the horizon, is going to be zero degrees, and its azimuth is between south and east, making it southeast, and southeast is 135 degrees. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Let's try star A. This is star B. Now we'll do star A. Okay, we're going to do again azimuth and altitude. Let's start with azimuth. Okay, azimuth again is direction. When your star is on the celestial meridian, this green bar right here, it's either going to be south or north. Okay, how do you know? Well, if it's between the zenith and south, it is 180 degrees as south. If it is between the zenith and north, or to the right, it is going to be north. But in this case, we are located on the southern side, so it is going to be south, 180 degrees. Okay, um, well, what about its altitude? 
how high up is it? It's obviously not on the horizon anymore. It is instead on the celestial meridian. So let's try to figure that out. Where would our star A be? Okay, so we have our 90 degree angle here. Our 45 degree mark is going to be about here. Okay, and this is going to be 90 for both sides. All right. <clears throat> All right, so if this is 45 degrees and this is zero, we're going to say that maybe we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or, or somewhere around there. Okay, so we are eyeballing this. Um, if you, when you have this on paper, it's best to use a protractor. You get a, a lot more accurate. Uh, but for now, we're just going to be eyeballing this for this example uh, so that it's easier. Okay? Uh, so A is around 30. Okay, so we're going to say it has an altitude of about 30 degrees. Okay? Um, and then what about C? Let's look at star C over here. Star C is, is not rising, so it's not coming up in the east. It's actually setting. Okay? So remember, stars rise in the east and they set in the west. Okay? Um, a is this is all A, B, and C are all the paths of one star. So it's B as it's as it's starting to rise above the horizon. A is when it's at maximum altitude, and then C is when it is going back below the horizon. So as it is at the horizon again, okay, as it is at the horizon again, its altitude is going to be zero degrees once more. And because it's between south and west, which is right here it's going to be 225 degrees for its direction, or azimuth. Okay, um, so let's do a couple more. So we've got star E, D, and F now that we're going to do, all right? So let's start with E. Okay, E is right at the horizon, so its altitude, it's rising, it's going to be zero degrees. It is between north and east, and northeast is 45 degrees, okay? So that's the azimuth, that's the direction it is rising from. All right, so now let's go to D. We are at maximum altitude now. We are on the celestial meridian, uh, but we are to the left of the zenith, meaning that we are indeed south. So our direction is south, 180 degrees. Now let's look at altitude. Okay, so remember, about here is 45. We had already said this was about 30, 40, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, right? So that makes D about 70 degrees. And again, we're going to say about 70 degrees uh, because I am eyeballing this and I'm not using a protractor. Okay? All right, now let's look at F. F is again on the horizon because it is setting and the direction it's setting in is between north and west. Okay? The direction it is setting in is between north and west, which means we have to be about here. So about, we are at around 315 degrees. And that's our direction. It's going to mean that, well, we're on the horizon again, so what's our altitude? Zero degrees, okay? Let's change that, zero degrees. All right. And let's try our last one, which is going to be H, G, and I. So let's look at H first. H, again, on the horizon, so its altitude is zero. And it is rising from, again, the northeast, making it a 45 degree azimuth, okay? Now let's get to G. G is once more maximum altitude, and it's going to be on the celestial meridian, which is right here, okay? Which means it is between, it is to the right of the zenith, so it is between zero and 90 degrees on the celestial meridian. It's going to be north, so zero degrees for direction. Now let's figure this out. If about here is 45 degrees, 45, 50, uh, 60, 70, 80. So in this one, we're about 60, 65 degrees. So let's just put about 60 degrees, again, eyeballing it for its altitude from the horizon to the zenith. And now let's look at I. Okay, I again on the horizon, altitude is zero degrees. But we are now setting in the northwestern quadrant, so we are going to put 315 degrees. Okay, and that's how you essentially figure out the azimuth and altitude. All right, so now we're going to talk about finding maximum altitude. Maximum altitude, you are going to continue to need a couple things. You are going to need to know um, your, your um, 
declination of the star, your right ascension in this case is not as important, and you're going to need your celestial equator. Okay, Of all three things that you could possibly be given, those are the two that are most important. Uh, your right ascension and declination are your coordinates for your stars, kind of like we have latitude and longitude while on Earth, the celestial sphere itself, the globe form, has a declination and right ascension. Okay, um, Declination is going to be positive negative, just like la uh, our, our latitude and longitude are, and then our right ascension is going to be a 24-hour circle going around, um, and so essentially it goes like this around your globe, Okay, starting with zero degrees, ending in 23, 24. Okay, so it's like a 24-hour clock. This one is always going to be from zero hours to 23 hours and 59 minutes, essentially. Okay, because the zero and the 24 are the overlapping same line, right? And your declination is always going to either be in positive or negative, okay, and it is also going to be in degrees. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. How do we find celestial your celestial equator? Let's start with that. Okay, so for the celestial equator, it is based on your location relative to the North Celestial Pole. Okay, and so to do that, you need to know your latitude. And then you essentially add 10 to that, and you get your celestial equator. Because your celestial equator is going to be about 10 degrees below it. So let's use the example for Clark, uh, not Clark, Union, New Jersey, okay, at Kane University. Union, New Jersey, Kane University, your latitude is about 40 degrees, okay? So we add 10, which means your celestial equator is equal to 50 degrees, okay? That's how we find that. All right, so let's do a quick example. Let's say you have a star that has a, a declination of minus 16. What do you do? You're going to add the celestial equator plus the declination, and that will give you your maximum altitude. That means that is the highest that star will go. So when we're looking at, for example, not that one. When we're looking at this one, the celestial equator is when you are on this green bar right here, okay? Or your celestial meridian. That is when your star will be at its maximum altitude, like A, D, and G over here. Okay? So that's what you're looking to find, that maximum altitude, just given the coordinates that you have. So we're going to do 50 degrees, because that's our celestial equator, plus negative 16 degrees, because that's our declination. Okay? That is going to give us 44 degrees. Okay? And it is positive. Um, and so that is our maximum altitude. Now, from this, we can look for our direction, our azimuth. How exactly do we know? It's not like we can say, oh, it's definitely 0 to 44, it's blah, blah, blah. No, actually it is. It's, it's that simple. If it is anywhere from 0 to 90, its azimuth is south, or 180 degrees. Okay. If your number is greater than 90, your azimuth is going to be north, or 0 degrees, or 360, whatever you choose. Okay, so essentially, if you have a number greater than 90, you are north. One problem, you're not supposed to have a number greater than 90. So, what are you supposed to do? What you do is something, again, relatively simple. We're going to use Union, New Jersey again at Kane University for our celestial, or our location. So again, celestial equator is going to continue to be 50 degrees, okay, for this example. All right, um, so now let's say you have a declination of uh, 64 degrees, okay, positive, positive 64 degrees. What do you do? All right, so again, first thing, celestial equator plus declination gives you maximum altitude, okay? 50 degrees plus 64 gives you 114 degrees. That is greater than 90. That is not allowed, like what I said earlier. So what do we do? We subtract 180 from it. We do 180 minus 114. Okay. 
and we get 66 degrees, okay? That is our maximum altitude, 66 degrees. But because we subtracted by 180, that means our direction, our azimuth, is equal to zero degrees or north. Uh, and the reason for that is because anywhere from zero to 90 degrees, you're going to be on the southern part, and beyond that, you will be in the northern part. But you can't go 95, 100, 105, 115, 120, and get to the whole 180, okay? It's not how it works. It still needs to be zero to 90. So you, if you're over by this much, you now need to subtract by 180 in order to get what that is, okay? Which in this case is 66 degrees. Okay, now we're gonna move on to talking about now from Ruskin. Ruskin has the latitude of about 27 degrees, okay? So now we have to find the celestial equator. Remember, celestial equator equals latitude plus 10. So 27 plus 10, which gives us a celestial equator of 37 degrees, okay? Which we have up here. So let's start with our first question. Don't forget, maximum altitude is equal to the celestial equator plus your declination, okay? Uh, so we'll do our, our first example. Our, our star A has a declination of minus 16 degrees and an RA of, let's say, 15 hours, okay? So remember, right now, not important, important. So let's work out the equation. Maximum altitude is equal to celestial equator plus declination, 37 plus negative 16, which gives us 21 degrees, okay? So our, our, our maximum altitude for star A is 21 degrees. Now let's talk about what's its azimuth. Because it is less than 90 degrees, its azimuth is going to be 180 degrees or south. Okay. All right, let's try this again. Something a little bit bigger. Or let's do a second star. Now let's do star B. Okay. Star B has a declination of, let's say, 56 degrees. Okay. RA is going to be 2 hours and 15 minutes. Okay. All right, again, all right, not important, right, right now. Declination, important, because we're trying to find maximum altitude. Okay, maximum altitude, again, celestial equator, which is up here, plus declination. So we'll have 37 plus 56 degrees. Okay, and that's going to give us 93. Okay, 93 is greater than 90 degrees, therefore we have to subtract it by 180. Okay, uh, and that is going to give us 87 degrees. Okay, that is our maximum altitude. Okay, now how do we find azimuth for this? Because it is greater than 90 degrees, because it is greater than 90 degrees, it must be north or 0 degrees, 360 degrees, whichever you choose, okay? Uh, and that's how you end up finding maximum altitude. And again, that's how you use maximum altitude to determine if your star is north or south when it reaches its highest point. All right, that is our video for now, and I'll see you guys next time.